Not the Nerd O'Clock News. Q3 2020. The facts as I know them are not facts but theories. Thus, elements of the following fantastical, known partial truths may be founded upon fragments of fruity fiction. And any similarity such content might manifest to entities and events within your realm of reality is purely coincidental. Ryzen Recycle at some point imminently prior to July the 7th, 2020, the Ruby Rebels at Castle Crimson grew restless of their epiphany of philanthropy, and voices of discontent could be heard to mutter, Who do we think we are? Robin Hood's merry minions? Here we perch on the peak of the industry, reaping adulation for the cores, cash, dyes and cheapest chiplets that we toiled to etch from unyielding wafer, densely woven with the wonders of 7 nanometer lithography, using ultraviolet lasers as radiant as the average enthusiast's RGB lighting array, before burdening ourselves with razor-thin margins. Having overhauled Intel for the performance crown, don't you think we might have undercut their bounties a little too barbarically? We'd be foolish to release this trio of freshly fabricated risins from our foundry at a price that even the roughest, rudest riffraff can afford. You know their type. Much once more. Zen's tertiary tenure is but a fiscal quarter away, and they'll expect further bargain binning. Can't we do anything in the precious meantime to partially recoup our charitable expenditure? Well, tickle my transistors. It's a truckload of spare letter T's. And if there's one thing we've come to know about the alphabet's 20th letter in the 21st century, it's how prettily and profitably it pairs up with an X. It would scarcely be extreme extortion to commercially exterminate three existing Ryzen Xs and extract the merits of these surplus Ts by tacking them onto the tails of their turbocharged twins, ditch the bundled cooler, then charge a few dollars extra for an extraordinarily exciting boost frequency bonus. Now that's a level of market exploitation that even Intel would extol. Uh, uh, pardon me, but I'm not certain as to why you're complaining. After all, Intel phased out stock coolers for their high-end processors in 2016 when Skylake was introduced. It's perfectly reasonable for AMD to follow suit four years later especially after bundling such quality solutions since Zen's inception. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point, but it still doesn't excuse the price. A hundred dollars for a hundred megahertz and a net performance gain equating to Bob Cratchit's Christmas bonus, please. Ah, but the higher quality silicon mentor could sustain those speeds at a lower voltage. But with the same power consumption. And in fact, AMD's official prices for the outgoing X chips only ranged from around $25 to $50 less. But up to $100 from competitive e-tailers, and without a cooler, which would cost you at least $50 extra. I think you'll find the 3600 XT actually came with a cooler. Right, but not the other two. Yeah, the people who ordered those probably already had a wraith prism from a previous Ryzen. It's still carrot and stick commerce. Now go and shove your head up a comment section. Pixelated Prophecies During a prolonged and unsettled period of globally enforced social isolation, a substantial subsection of the tech community suffered a collective and increasingly compulsive attack of CSS. Not cascading style sheets, but rather cyclical speculation syndrome. This largely occupational condition has a broad and complex history, with most chronic sufferers being those with extensive careers in the fields of news and current affairs. It has been known to transform long-established entities acclaimed for lucid and responsible journalism into festering quagmires of regurgitated sensationalism, sustained by a collective and rabid lust for topics that appear sufficiently newsworthy 
or will at least translate to clickbait in less time than it takes to read an amnesiac goldfish's tweet. One particularly contagious strain in the spring of 2020 precipitated a feverish debate concerning the specifications of two unreleased GPUs, Ampere and Big Navi, respectively originating from the all-seeing emerald eye in the sky and its omnipresent ruby rival. Memory bandwidth, core quota, compute power, data throughput, pixel rate, and clock frequencies were all little more than spurious splinters adorning the edge of the rumour mill's illusory sails. But that didn't deter a contingent of stat-starved influencers, all ravenous for subscribers and promotional review samples, from willfully forsaking any desire for facts, resulting in a relentless chronology of capricious subjectivity, punctuated by such tabloid evolved titles as NVIDIA are screwed, AMD are completely screwed, NVIDIA are wholly and utterly screwed, AMD are thoroughly, entirely and irreversibly screwed, Big Navi set to brutalise Ampere, Ampere apt to annihilate Big Navi, Rampant Navi ready to ravage rotten Ampi, Prince Ampi poised to Polax puny Navi. King Navi created to crush crappy Ampi. Royal Navi reared to roast rubbish Ampi. Puns of Navironi. Navigating to victory. Empirically supreme. It's over. AMD have no chance. It's really over. Nvidia have less than no chance. Ampere amped to its 8192 cores as confirmed by a later expunged tweet. Daddy Navi doubles the die to deliver death blow to anemic Ampere. So says the gospel according to St. Gossip. Flagship Ampi shall sink subpar Navi. Big Navi just got bigger. Biggest Ampi got bigger still. Mighty Navi mightier than the mightiest meatiest Ampi. Nvidia goes vegan with zero performance penalty. AMD pioneers protein powered ray tracing. Full fat Ampere carved up to the cooders. Big Navi Eco Savvy. New Big Navi cards finally announced on an uncorroborated Twitter post composed by an alleged Lisa Sue superfan. Validated Ampere specs released at last by an anonymous Twitter user with purported ties to Nvidia's unofficial PR subdivision who just happened to read the aforementioned tweet and was compelled to fight fake fire with phony hype. Fresh and juicy Navi details leaked to a subsequently deleted Twitter account with no prior history of dependable information whatsoever and that were officially refuted by the company to which they were ostensibly attributed one day later. Complete range of Ampere GPUs exclusively obtained from the very same unverified Twitter source that shat out the previous splat of pervasive propaganda. But I don't care. I'm harping on for five hours about them anyway because it's my only chance of staying sane between now and the time I spend another five hours telling you why not to buy them when my free review sample fails to show up again. Far be it from me to be pedantic, but I think you'll find that most of those rumours actually turned out to be true. Yes, but it doesn't make them any less irritating. Now get out!